Hello everybody, it's Joe here and welcome back to another episode of uh, Train Sim World, this time looking at the latest in the Train Sim World series, Train Sim World 4. Uh, this has launched on September the 26th, 2023, and uh, I was sent over a key uh, by the good people at Dovetail Games, and uh, this is a, uh, what, what's the word, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a sponsored collaboration uh, that we're doing here, so they've uh, they've given me a brief to work to and uh, and. Uh, They've actually done my job for me, pretty much, by mentioning they've given me a list of the features so I can tell you all about that without missing anything out. So yeah, we're going to be having a look at Trains in World 4. This isn't a review today, because uh, as I say, it's a sponsored collaboration. So uh, th what this what this basically means is I'm going to be looking through the features that Trains in World uh, has to offer. So uh, for those of you that are familiar with Trains in World, so be it Trains in World 1, 2 or 3, you're not going to like be completely blown off your feet with uh, you know with like oh my god this is this is I, I don't know what to do because because uh, it is uh, more of a uh, evolution rather than a re revolution evolution rather than revolution so if you're familiar with trains in world 3 you're gonna know what you're doing here you're not going to be uh, completely bamboozled uh, which is a good thing. It's uh, there's a lot of familiar familiarity. I can't speak today. I tell you. Uh, so uh, yeah, one thing that we can do first of all is uh, is basically you'll see I've got my uh, my dovetail live in the corner. You can import everything over, so it's nice and easy. You don't have to start again if you've cracked uh, if you've if you've got loads and loads of hours on Trains in World Three. You're not going to lose them. So uh, so that's a good thing. Now uh, it's available on quite a few platforms. It's available on Steam, Epic. Uh, Epic Game Store, I believe, or just Epic. PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Xbox Series S, and Xbox Series X. Uh, however, it will not be available on Microsoft Game Pass. Uh, which, I mean, I'm, I'm a Steam user, so it's easy enough for me. Uh, if you do own existing content, it will be available. If we have a look here in To The Trains, you can see in, uh, in Choose A Route. We've got all the routes from the previous ones, even back to Sandpatch Grade. So from Train Sim World 1 there, Northern Trans Pennine, it's all there, along with a couple of, uh, of new ones. So yeah, as you can see in the top right corner there, your driver progress will transfer, providing, of course, you have a Dovetail Live account. If you've not got it, like twinned with the Dovetail Live account, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't uh, it doesn't come uh, come over. Now uh, there you go. You can see my profile there. What? Uh, oh, look at that favourite route, Glossop Line, Manchester to Hadfield and Glossop. So yeah, I've, I've spent a bit of time on that. I quite like that route. Uh, you've also got your training centre here, uh, where you can learn uh, basic. Uh, fundamentals. It's it's that one that was set in, it, it looks like it's set in the Alps, I don't know if it is or not, but uh, you can learn all your trains, all your operations in there. That was also a feature on Trains in World 3. Uh, so yeah, if you're new to Trains in World, you're not really sure what you're doing, that's a good place. You've got your link to the store. Create a club here, you can see you've got your livery designer, scenario planner, etc, uh, etc. Et so we've got all that. So like I say, there's there's quite a lot that was in Trains in World 3, so uh, it is still available in Trains in World 4. Now, uh, if we have a look in the To The Trains, today we're going to be looking, uh, obviously, at the uh, at the East Coast Main Line, Peterborough to Doncaster. It's got your training modules, your free roam, uh, you can explore in uh, in free roam there, scenarios and just a timetable, 452 uh, services there. You've got trains involved. Look at that. That's a comprehensive list, isn't it? 66, 700, 801, class 158. If you've got them, it will add them in automatically. And the Flying Scotsman, which of course this year uh, is its 100th anniversary uh, celebrations. So, uh, so that is also included. I'm not going to be driving that because I can't drive steam trains for toffee. I'm terrible at it. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, we're not going to be doing that because I'll just make a fool of myself. Now, what we are going to be doing is uh, is going on the uh, on the rail journeys because I quite like working through these. As you can see uh, on here, you see I've done high speed, uh, high speed, high speed hybrid. Uh, you've got a couple of uh, a couple of the. Uh, Fly Scotsman ones there, including the tutorial. So uh, yeah, driving a train, we've done that. High speed hybrid. We're going to be doing London King's Cross to Newark Northgate. Now obviously it's Peterborough to Doncaster, so we're not doing the full route, but it's 34 minutes uh, in length. So uh, let's get started on that, because obviously you are here because you want to see some trains. 
and uh, I am here because I want to drive some trains. So yeah, uh, it does include uh, Peterborough, Grantham, Newark Northgate, Retford and Doncaster. But as I say, we're going to turn off at Newark Northgate. It's a Lincoln bound service. So drive the LNER service from Peterborough to Newark Northgate. Right, okie dokie. So I'm going to pop, uh, pop the train protection uh, warning system and AWS on. We're going to pop our key in there. TPWS and AWS. Okay, so she's she's sounding good. TPWS and AWS operational. We'll get the uh, get the old dimmed lights on. Uh, so here we are at Peterborough. Look at that. We're in the class 801 uh, Azuma, uh, the LNER livered. It looks pretty good to be honest with you, people. We've got uh, we've got a nice looking train there. Some uh, some of those lovely interconnecting carriages there. The uh, the little pipes that go between the two. Oh, we're on a 5 car unit today, of course. I wonder if we've got anything over here. Sometimes you can see a class 700. If you own the 700 uh, from the previous titles, it will appear here. You do also get the East Midlands 158, so uh, you can see there the 1140. So I don't think we're going to see that. Loco Stop Spot, that's obviously a cafe. I wonder if we have things to do like we did on the, uh, on the previous Train Sim World titles. I don't think we've really got long enough, but uh, is there... Have we got, like, grip bins to fill up? Obviously, with us on the on the flying camera, that's probably not going to be. Oh, we've got like actual proper train simula uh, train station style. Oh, there's a board. We could do something with that, couldn't we? Probably. I haven't got the time. I haven't got the time. So uh, yeah, starting at Peterborough Peterborough station, looking pretty good there. I mean, you can tell it's Peterborough, can't you? So that's that's pretty much all that uh, all that we need to know. Of course, we can get out and uh, and have a wander around. So I tell you what, we'll do. We'll, we'll get out through this door. See if we can... Whee! There we go. We can top the newspapers up. And I'm intrigued. Can we do something with that? Whee! Look at that. That's a proper LNER route map. And it is a full route map rather than just uh, the Newark to... Uh, or Doncaster to Peterborough bit. I quite like that. You've got the full full route map there. That's awesome. Right. Let's, uh, let's jump back in. Uh, yeah. There we go. Just in time for departure. Uh, right. There we go. It does appear that we have to close the doors ourselves on this. Uh, we, we don't have a guard working this train. Uh, right, hang on. I would like to see that in future, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, we had that uh, in previous train sim titles. I would definitely like to see uh, them add a guard in future so that they will close the doors and give you the, uh, the old buzz buzz. I mean, working as a conductor myself, uh, I, I most certainly uh, would like to see a conductor. A bit of, uh, and of course, we had in, uh, in, the, uh, in the Hadfield line you could work as a conductor, so that was, that was nice, wasn't it? Uh, right, okie dokie, 25 mile an hour coming up. My absolute favourite thing from this is now you've got all this in here. You can see 25 mile an hour, and then we'll go to 115. These do display your signal aspects, the little signal blobs, if you want them to. I've got it turned off personally, uh, because I prefer to you know, have to actually look out the window rather than just rely on this. Uh, it does do 1.25 miles. I don't know if on the... On the options there, we can change that to make it a bit further away, because in my personal uh, experience, 1.25 miles, if you're travelling at speed, can be a little bit like, whoa, yeah, it doesn't appear you can change that. Maybe you can, maybe you can, I'm not sure, maybe I'm looking in the wrong place, but uh, that would be quite nice if you could just, like, maybe change it to 2 miles, 3 miles. It's a nice feature, it's, it's like I say, it's something that I've wanted and I've whinged about for a lot of, uh, well, for a lot of years. <laughs> so I'm glad it's finally here. Now we're running on electric mode, we're calling it Grantham and uh, Newark Northgate today. Whoa, hang on, what have I done? I've click, clicked off my flipping screen there. There we go, click back on you, uh, you sausage. Uh, so yeah, we're playing this as a, uh, as a let's play today. Like I say, not a review. Uh, not a review, so please don't, uh, you know, don't think, oh, well, Joe's not giving a balanced opinion, because it, it's not a review. I'm just playing it and, uh, and seeing what's available. So, uh, yeah, you do get quite a few routes with this. New routes, uh, you've got the UK East Coast Mainline Peterborough to Doncaster, which is available in, uh, in all editions of this. That's obviously what we're driving today. You do get a USA route, which is the Antelope Valley Line, Los Angeles to Lancaster, again available in, uh, in all editions, uh, standard, deluxe and special edition. And uh, of course you've got the, uh, the German, oh, sorry, Central Europe. I say German because they usually did UK, USA and German, but this is of course the S-Bahn, Vorarlberg Lindau to St. Margrethen i Bludenz. Uh, which is standard edition, deluxe edition, and special edition. So, uh, yeah, quite a few things included there. Flying Scotsman 
available in the deluxe edition and the special edition uh, and uh, the BR193 Siemens Vectron which is deluxe edition and special edition. There is a couple of other editions, flipping heck there's loads of editions here. Uh, let me have a look. So we've got the editions we've got, you've got the standard edition. It's going to cost you £39.99 for the standard edition and it includes all your core features uh, which is those three routes that I've mentioned uh, there. You've got the deluxe edition uh, which basically includes the most there. So uh, it includes all core features, uh, all those new routes. You also get the Vectron locomotive, Nahwerke Dresden route, which is upgraded, and the Flying Scotsman. Now that one does appear to be, if you if you add it up, and uh, you know the amount that the DLCs will cost you individually, uh, it does seem that that one is the best value for money. So if you know you're an avid Train Sim World player, you're going to end up spending the money anyway. You're probably better to just bite the bullet and uh, and spend more money now because in the long run it will save you money that's 52 pound 99 uh, for and that includes everything pretty much uh, that's new you've got the special edition uh, which uh, includes uh, a little bit less you don't get the uh, hang on where are we now uh, you don't get the Narvik uh, Dresden route uh, or the flying Scotsman uh, and that, oh hang on, no, the special edition you get more, sorry that's on a different page. <laughs> that's me saying the special edition costs more and you get less, that's not the case, it's on a different uh, a different thing. You get the Boston Sprinter route, South Eastern High Speed, LGV Mediterrane, uh, the Mediterranean route on there. So uh, yeah, special edition you get the most uh, in because you get a couple of routes that are already available, but obviously if you own them it's better to go for the uh, the deluxe edition. If you're just a UK simmer, you've got the uh, you've got the UK starter pack, uh, which includes basically just your UK route. Oh, hey, eight or one going the other way there. Uh, you've got a Flying Scotsman Centenary pack, uh, which uh, you've got a Central Europe for if you just want any European routes. It's quite nice that if you don't want it all, you can get it a little bit cheaper. That's twenty nine ninety nine, and uh, it will just include the US airlines, just include your European. You know what I mean? So if if you don't want it all. Uh, you can do that as well. But as I say, the deluxe edition, which includes everything, is uh, is certainly your best value for money there. Uh, so, yeah, there's uh, there's also loyalty discounts for any previous owners of Trains in World, uh, which are available up until October the 17th. And uh, Xbox and Epic players are going to receive a 20% pre-order discount rather than a loyalty discount. But I realise that this is being uh, way... There goes the horn. I realise this has been published after the release, so I don't know if the pre-order discounts still apply. It doesn't say anything about that uh, in the uh, in the information pack I've got. So yeah, you've got a livery designer, uh, undo and redo. I mean, I never used the livery designer personally, so that, to me, I'm assuming you couldn't... Ooh, flashing green signal there. I'm assuming you couldn't undo things or redo them, but that is added now. Uh, up to a thousand layers, flipping out you'd be hitting trains going the other way if you had a thousand layers of paint on it. Um, text entry, font selection, that's quite nice, I like that. It means that it's probably easier to create uh, real world liveries if you can uh, if you can edit the font there. Scenario planners with custom start times, chaining paths, portal support for AI, that sounds very much like the scenario planner in TrainSim Classic which I really enjoy using. Uh, so it's good that you can make your own scenarios now, I like that. Weather selection, of course, we need to be able to select the weather. Formation designer, assemble your own consists of rail vehicles for use in scenario planner and free roam. Make up your dream formations. So for all those people that are saying, oh, why don't you just have more carriages? Now you can drive a 20 coach Azuma train, if you so wished, uh, between Peterborough and Doncaster and hopefully everyone will get a seat. Lovely, 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 lovely stuff. Uh, custom liveries at your disposal, you can mix and match. Photo mode, ooh, now hang on. How do we do that then? Uh, photo mode, let's press escape. Oh, it's not in there. Uh, hang on. Control guy, match schedule, message log. How do you do photo mode then? Let, let's have a look in, ah, ha, ha. Photo, oh, that, you see, this is, now we're talking, look at this. You know I love a, uh, you know I love a photo. Hey, right. Let's, uh, let's, right, how do it depth of field? We can zoom in there. Uh, it, it doesn't appear to have, oh, hang on, yeah, because depth of field, you sausage, right, there we go. Let's get that to 50%. That's the one we want. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Beautiful. The sky is really making it look quite grey here, isn't it? Rotation, that's, uh, woo. Right, okay, we'll do that. Focal point. 
So what have we? Oh, hang on. There we go. Right. So if we, oh, oh, I, I don't like that. Right. We'll leave that on hundred percent. Depth of field. Right. Hang on. If we, what does that change? It doesn't appear to change a lot. So we'll just leave it on fifty percent. And I am gonna use the space bar. Oh, look at that. Well, there you go. That's the uh, that's the that's the first screenshot of the uh, of the trains in World Four series. Let's have uh, let's have another one. Take the screenshot. There we go. Save that. Right, out of photo mode, back to driving. You know I'm a sucker for a photo mode, people. And now we have that. Did we have that in the old game, or is that new? I don't know. If it was in the old game, I never knew about it. <laughs> and of course, you've got the uh, the free roam mode, uh, which is where you see people driving Class 700s on the Northern Trans Pennine route with no wires. That that to me is something I don't. I don't use, but uh, you do have it. You can spawn trains anywhere you like, set them on paths anywhere you like. Uh, the world is yours to create your own tasks and evolve your session as you drive around. Full freedom with your entire collection to use as you wish. See, I don't use that. I quite like driving in the timetable mode. It's just me personally. Uh, there is also a public, edi uh, ed public editor. Uh, access our version of the Unreal Engine 4 tool set, same advanced tool. Uh, as our internal teams use to create anything you like in Trains in World 4, from gameplay to trains and even your own routes. I'm liking the sound of that, people. Even your own routes. See, that's that's hopefully. You see, the thing that f w w over the years in Train Sim World has, has sort of put me off is I liked it in Train Sim Classic, where you had the you know you had a lot of third-party modding, and hopefully. Trains in World 4 is starting to go that way where because people like to create their own things don't they and like if there's something in this I know that Josh Rubio does a lot of uh, a lot of editing of this a lot of little patches a lot of little improvements uh, and if, if people can do that I think that's when Trains in World's going to start to start to last longer if you see what I mean before players put it down because obviously that's that's what you want isn't it Trains in Classic has lasted all these years because you've been able to, you know, there's been so much modability, so hopefully this is going to go the same way. So that if a train isn't quite 100% real world, someone will be able to come along and just, yeah, we'll just tweak that and add that and, uh, and, and, you know, mess about with that to improve it and then those patches will be available uh, wherever they are available. So fingers crossed. Uh, so you've got two new locos for the training centre, the Class 323 and the Class 4F Steam Loco. Was the 323 not available in the training centre in Trains in World 3? I think I missed that. <laughs> but no, if, if, if it wasn't, it is now. Uh, improved player assists. Uh, right, okay, so they're marked by difficulty, the uh, trains and scenarios. Automatic coupling, simpler hood and mini hood. Improved customizability. That's what we like, that's what we like. Improved overhead line rendering, so uh, obviously it's, uh, it's, it's improved over Trains in World 3. Improved rain effects. Now, we're not going to see that today unless it is going to start raining shortly. I do like how we're in a dark section of cloud now. And now we're in a light section. You can actually see the clouds that are leaving a shadow on the land. That's that's nice. I like that. That's very nice indeed. And volumetric fog. Excellent. You see, it's all little things like this that you don't realise you've missed until they add them in. Like, Ooh, that looks tasty. That, that's nice, isn't it? That looks nice. So uh, yeah, I think I pretty much covered, and I'm sure that I'll get told off. They'll be, oh, you, you, you forgot to mention this. Um, but no, I think I've pretty much covered everything there. Um, so yeah, on on this particular route, I haven't actually said anything about this particular route, but uh, it's uh, it's allowing you 125 mile an hour running, which uh, obviously you will see that we are currently at 124 mile an hour. It's certainly a lot better. Uh, than our original Trains in World stuff where, I mean, the high-speed route we had was London to Reading. It's quite a short route, whereas this really is quite a lengthy route indeed. I mean, if we have a look on the old uh, the old map there, which is not pre by pressing N, M, it's by pressing 9. Look at all that. I mean, we've been going that much. We've got all the way up here to uh, sunny Doncaster you've got available. Obviously, with Grantham being there. So we've got plenty of route to, uh, to go flying along at. It's got five stations, which is of course Doncaster, Retford, Newark, Northgate, Grantham and Peterborough. Uh, it's 80 miles in length. You've got your new LNER Class 801 Azuma, Britain's new uh, high-speed train. 
Olympics that came to the East Coast in 2019, a strong timetable featuring the Class 158 from the Midland Main Line, and a slew of other operations, uh, so you see 700. I don't know how much you'll be able to do with the 700 other than shunt at Peterborough, but uh, it's nice to have it nonetheless. You've got it as a nice AI train as well. Uh, and of course, the Flying Scotsman will have services on this route. I would have driven that, but like I say, I'm not very good at driving steam trains out of the cloud again there. I'm not very good at driving steam trains. Uh, I think I would just make an absolute fool uh, of myself there. Uh, there is, of course, plenty of other uh, features available for the European and the uh, and the USA route. I'm just going to click that and click off my screen there. Is that going to is that going to keep us? Oh, it just every time it gives a little stutter there, but that's not the game. That's me clicking off uh, onto my other monitor because because uh, obviously I either had the brief up with all the information in, or I had the uh, the thing that was showing if it was successfully recording. So I've been talking for the past 20 minutes there with no idea whether it was recording. I tell you, I'd have been act off if it hadn't done. <laughs> oh dear. Zooming along now. Zooming along. Got another uh, another zoomer. Give him a wave. Is he a nine car? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Lovely. I wonder if it lets you run as a ten car. I'm assuming it will, because they do run as ten cars in real life. We're uh, obviously in a uh, in a little little dinky five car formation today. Quite good as well, because I do believe LNER run with the front pan up. I think some operators run with the rear pan, some run with the front pan, or is it the other way around? Do LNER run with the the rear pan and LNER seem to do it a different way to every other operator and, and I can never for the life of me remember which way around it is. Oh, we look to be catching up some sort of freight uh, freight here on the left, is that a freight? It is. Oh no, hang on, it's, uh, it's a passenger train. Right, hang on, tell you what we'll do. Whee, there we go, right, we are going back into, uh, into the uh, the options, the photo mode. Look at that! That is fantastic. Right, let's. Uh, oh, that's the that's the money shot, people. Look at that. Right, let's let's have a, a photo. Save that, and then well, it will be unfair to take it with the. Look at that! Yeah. Oh, fantastic! I'm glad we played this scenario now. And as you could see from the menu, I've never done this one before, so I wasn't sure what we were seeing. But there you have it, in all its glory, the uh, the Flying Scotsman. Lovely, lovely stuff. Right, we're leaving him behind now, because we're, uh, we're carrying on. So you can see now we've got a speed limit reduction of 100 and... Well, not over 115, that would imply we're slowing down to 10 mile an hour. But we're slowing down to 115 there. I'm not sure if the speed set is available in this. These obviously do have speed sets. I'm not quite sure how to... Uh, how to operate it if there is. If you look, you can also click dark screen. You can turn this off if you want. A couple of little uh, funky bits there. You can change your brightness up and down. Sound volume. Uh, oh, right, okay. You can see your ASDO. What's this? Oh, auto announce. Eco driving. Traction status. Next stop reminder. That'd be good. Great. Hang on. Panto selection. Oh wow, you can actually, can you change the, I don't know, I don't know if you can or you can't, I'm not sure. Oh right, okay, is that going to go up then? Confirm, oh hang on, right, we're going too fast now because I'm too busy pressing with this screen. Shouldn't really be looking at that screen, Joe, pay attention out the front window please. Bit of building work going on on the right hand side. I've always said it's nice when they add things like that in because uh, we were looking at the uh, at the Cardiff to, uh, well the Swansea to Bristol route, weren't we, the updated one for Trains and Classic a couple of weeks ago and uh, I always say if there's a little bit of building, oh East Midlands, give them a wave, little dinky two car, uh, probably a Norwich service that I'd imagine. But uh, yeah, I was saying, wasn't I, on Train Sim Classic, it's nice when they add things like a little bit of building work going on at the side. It just gives the impression uh, that there is life here, which is, uh, is, of course, it's nice when you're driving on a route where you feel like there's, there's just people surrounding you going about the daily business. I know they're not, it's ridiculous, it's a game for goodness sake, but yeah, it just sort of brings it to life a bit more. To be honest, the performance is actually uh, pretty good. 
I've not noticed any uh, any stuttering. I did turn the motion blur off because I found that that was making me feel a bit funny. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not a lover of the motion blur. I know some people are. It's sort of 50-50, isn't it? But uh, for me personally, yeah, it made me feel a bit woohoo. You know, like, wee. Right, so it's slowing down for Grantham now. We're just over a mile away. We'll actually get a bit of breaking in, because if I don't slow down, we're going to go sailing through it, aren't we? You can just see the uh, the 100 mile an hour speed restriction in the top right hand side of the screen there. And uh, as I say, if you want to see my PC specs, uh, you can do so in the description. I am also going to put a link to the Trains in World website, so that if you've not bought this yet, you thought, oh, I've watched Joe play this, it looks pretty decent. I might like to try this out for myself, but I'm not quite sure because I don't have enough information. There is a link in the description uh, that will take you to Dovetail's website. You can have a look through uh, through all of that. I think I might have slowed down a bit prematurely now. Oh, there's an empty car park on the right. Flipping heck, it must be a Sunday. Nobody's travelling. Oh, there's another one coming the other way, look. Ah, right, because we're a five car, we're going to be stopping short here, aren't we? Just stopping halfway down the platform rather than going all the way to the end. That one's stopping uh, halfway down as well there. Lovely. Have we got a five car stop board on the left? I don't know. Ah, there you go, five car. And it's in purple as well, which the, uh, the Azumas, uh, the Hitachi uh, stop boards are in purple. Lovely. Oh, hang on. Right, there we go. Doors are open. Right, we'll pop it in neutral and we'll go for a wander. Let's see what we can find at Grantham. I wonder if they, do the control panels work there? They do. Lovely. Lovely. There's, uh, there's bits and pieces on here uh, that you can do as well. Ah, because it'll tell you how to start it from cold and uh, dark. Oh, right. ECTS is isolated. What else have we got? DSD. Where's the DSD isolated? Pop that on. Vigilance. Oh, yeah, we want all this on. Oh, hang on. There we go. Neutral. Ah, lovely. The DRA works, as does the DSD. You shouldn't be beeping. I've got you in neutral. Right, there we go. We'll shut that. We'll put up with the beeping. Why is it beeping from outside? Oh, it's one of those, isn't it? So that you can you can look outside. Right, do you know what? We're, we're just going to... No, you're fine. Right, we'll, we'll shut you. We'll, we'll pop you back on when we uh, when we get going. Right, let's have a look round Grantham. So this is Grantham. We're on the uh, oh, it's only going to new at this one. Perhaps uh, Lincoln's closed for the day. What's this? Oh right, we've filled the water bottle up. Are we are we just leaving our water bottle behind? Looks like it, doesn't it? We can have a wander up here. Mm, lovely. You see, I can't tell you how realistic this is. Can we go down in the lift like on uh, one of the? No. No lifts today. There he goes, look, he's off. Sounds like he's on diesel mode. Yeah, I've uh, I've never set foot on the platform at Grantham, ever. So I can't tell you... Oh, there we go, we'll add the newspaper. We've got a TVM there with the LNER logo on. Yeah, I can't tell you how realistic this is. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of station clutter going on, isn't there? There's, there's lots of signs, lots of... Uh, you've also got... It gave you the option to uh, to receive real-world advertisements in-game. So I don't know if that's like the advertisement posters are actually advertising real products. I'm not sure. Should we have a look on board now? Ooh, look at that. Oh, okay, this is actually pretty much... Right, let's see. Do we go uphill between the carriages? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, so these are obviously the ones with the engines in. Well, Azuma Standard. Go through the door. Welcome to Standard. God, we've got a lot on, haven't we? Full train. No! No! I don't want to. I'm just walking through. Oh, hang on, what's, what's happened to my mouse? Where's me? Oh, there we go. Oh heck, there's another one going sailing through on the other platform. He's not stopping, is he? No, I, d I didn't want to give up my controls at all. I just wanted to... Uh, right, we're going to go down there before I break something. Can we lock this door? No. <laughs> 
Right, let's close that. You see how big the cab is? They're absolutely enormous, aren't they? Right, oh, I like how it goes with a hearty slam. That's uh, that's good. They do in real life. You're like, wait, hey, bang, door shut. We have a lot of standing time here. Have I just driven quite quick? Right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll go, we'll just nip behind. Let's pop that on normal. There we go. Lovely. Right, okie dokie, ready to go. So we're in neutral. Right. Into forward, and away we go. Right. Notch two. Are we? Ah, uh, oh, there we go. There's just a little delay on the uh, on the power there, which is quite good. You can hear as well as you set off the uh, the doors back there that the little banging noise is uh, is of course uh, the doors all they sort of expand to to keep the air out. So when it's on the move, I'm not quite sure. I'm not explaining that well at all, am I? But if you are ever on one of these Hitachis, you'll notice the doors all make a banging noise when they get above a certain speed. It's it, they like seal themselves so that it's quieter in the train. It's quite clever, really. But it's good that they've incorporated that noise. When you're stopping as well, you do hear the hiss as you're stopping. So again, it's it's a nice feature. Right, 14 miles to go, 10 minutes. What have we got next to us here? Is that another another train of some sort, or is it... I don't know, I can't see it from here. Oh no, it's a bridge. It's a bridge with a side on it. I thought maybe it was the back end of a, of a uh, freight train. Now is that the line that goes towards Nottingham that these Midlands take? I don't know, I'm, I'm not too familiar with this line. There we go, we've got the, uh, the vigilance going off now. So we've obviously got to react to that, that's our pedal that makes the beep 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 beep, beep noise. I hope you enjoyed my impression there, I do all my own sound effects. Ninety mile an hour, quick up to speed, aren't they? These things. I mean, I know the 801 only seems to feature one engine uh, for getting it out of uh, if it's in a pickle. Whereas, of course, the 802s and the 800s have multiple engines on because they are designed to run on diesel as well. But you really do notice a difference when these are running on uh, on diesel compared to electric. The electric, they're like, whoa, off you go. So we're up to 115 now. Hopefully we'll get, because you can just see in the top right there, 125. Whee, into the tunnel. Oh, there's a light at the end. Oh, hang on, it's been pushed back there. I'm going to be pushed back again. Whilst we're in here, what I think I'm going to do... Oh, there we go. Whee, straight out the tunnel. I do like that, how it, it sort of... The lighting effect, and I've always liked this about Trentsim World. Uh, Trentsim Classic, as soon as you come out of tunnel, it's like daytime. Whereas this, it's like the, the flash, the white sort of flash, like your eyes are, are getting, you know, they're just taking a minute to adjust. If I go in there, I'll, uh, I'll have a look in the in the settings there. Settings. Uh, so where are we? Screen, is it screen? No, that's, that's not it. Uh, screen resolution. Should that not be 2K? I don't know, that might explain why it was... Uh, it was Showing something something earlier, uh, but yeah, uh, it was earlier. It was sort of it couldn't decide whether it was bigger or smaller. I think that's more my me that's running on the wrong resolution. It would explain a lot, but I don't want to change it now in case I break it. Uh, so yeah, I mean I am running on. Um, if you look in advanced settings here, high, 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 high. So I'm running on quite a high. Oh, you see these are on medium. Should we should we bob them on high? There we go. This is where it breaks it completely and it crashes. Oh no, it looks it looks much better now. Ah, oh, yeah, we'll run on high. Love it. Oh, yeah, that's far superior. Yeah, I appreciate I am quite late to the party with this one, but I did get sent it, literally. I think it was the second day of my holiday. Oh, there you go. There's your, your, uh, your key for Trains in World. I thought, oh, no, what bad timing. 
it's nobody's fault, is it? It's just the way that uh, that it falls. You see, this looks a lot better now that I've turned the shadows up. This is much nicer. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just the way it falls, isn't it? So, obviously, by the time I've submitted this, put it online, etc., uh, it is very much a case of, uh, you know, it's, it's one of them. So, obviously, a lot of people have beaten me to it at this point, but never mind. Hopefully, you'll have enjoyed it, nevertheless. As I say, I hope I've provided a, a comprehensive list of information regarding this game uh, and its pricings. And uh, as I say, if you do have any more questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try and answer them. Uh, I'll, well, I'll try my best, but you'd probably be better clicking on the link in the description and headed to Dovetail's website. And, uh, and you can probably have all your questions answered there, because uh, as much as I say ask me, you know I'm usually the last one to know everything. Usually. <laughs> it's just the way it works, isn't it? Powering along now, seven miles to go to Newark. Oh, oh, we're catching something, you can see. Get out my line of vision, I can't see. <laughs> I've earned a reward, but I can't see where I'm going. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could see we were just at a double yellow there, which uh, triggered the AWS, but then it went to a green. So we must be, uh, we must be catching something. I think that line to the left at Grantham was the line where the East Midlands go off, because, uh, of course, we haven't seen another one since, and they don't come up as far as Newark Northgate, do they? I know East Midlands go to Newark Castle, but I mean the uh, the Liverpool services, the Liverpool and Nottingham's, they don't go as far as uh, as Newark Northgate. So yeah, I reckon that's where they turn off. Oh, another double yellow there, going to green. Yeah, we're right behind something, aren't we? A couple of signal blocks in front, level crossing. I like as well on this how the uh, the cab's sort of swaying about as we're going. You know, it gives the impression that it's quite bumpy up here. Which, of course, the permanent way on the East Coast Main Line is quite bumpy. It always has been. You're, uh, you do tend to find up at, up at high speeds, you do get thrown about all over the place. It's quite nice, that. You, you feel like you're actually going quite quick. Double yellow again. Tell you what, we're just going to ease off there because it's three miles away. So we're, we're just going to ease off and coast. I don't know what time we are expected in. It's saying 11.33 and 30 seconds, but I don't know what our estimated time of arrival is. We'll just have a little bit of braking. Oh, double yellow again. Maybe it's something else that's also stopping at Newark. Maybe that got delayed behind the Flying Scotsman. Maybe they were just taking their sweet merry time. I don't know. Over the uh, over another level crossing. I must keep missing the whistle boards here. I need to look out for them. I'm too busy looking at the scenery. I'm assuming we'll have some approach control down here because uh, going double yellow, single yellow uh, over. Because obviously we're going to go over on the, on the slower line speed there. You can just see it appearing now in the top right hand corner, 30 mile an hour. Uh, in the top right there. Alternatively, occasionally what I have noticed is when we do get brought down here, we wait for a fast train coming from uh, coming from the York direction. So we'll, uh, we're expecting the next signal to be a red here. We'll, uh, we'll have a little bit more, a little bit more braking.
Of course you can, if you look in the right, you can see the signal blobs. I mentioned it earlier, but you can if you if you don't want to sort of be in suspense as to what your next signal is going to be. You can uh, have these as shown like green and yellow and, and whatnot so that you're... Uh, there we go. Ah, it is a red look. I think it is it a red? Just can't quite make it out from here. Yes, it is. Right, okay. Passing over the TPWS grids there, we'll, uh, we'll approach it at 15 miles an hour. Pop the uh, the old DRA on. Oh, hang on, I'm moving the reverser here. That's not what I'm meaning to do. Oh, right, okay, we've got the uh, we've got the signal. Full steam ahead, up to thirty, please. Oh, there's uh, there's an Azuma sat in the uh, in the side ends on the right there. I wonder what that's doing there. Is that some sort of Lincoln shuttle? So we got the uh, the route indicator or the feather to tell us we're going over to the right here. So yeah, you can see the main two platforms there. We'd obviously use those if we were carrying on towards York and Leeds and Edinburgh, uh, but we're not. We're going over to the right here. Normally at this stage, they'd activate the diesel mode. And uh, the train will continue on uh, diesel mode through to Lincoln. So yeah, there you go. That's uh, that's our first look video at Train Sim World 4. Let me know in the comments section what you think. As I say, I've uh, I've always enjoyed the Train Sim World. Uh, th well, Train Sim World 3, Train Sim World 2. Uh, the UK routes that they've had to offer. I've always enjoyed them. Uh, this hasn't let me down. It's been an enjoyable drive. I haven't minded it at all. Uh, as I say, all the information is in the uh, in the description of the video and uh, yeah thank you so so much for watching as I say this was a uh, sponsored collaboration so I do hope you enjoyed it hopefully we can do more in the future if uh, if Dovetail Games didn't completely hate every second of what I did uh, maybe we can do some more oh there we go oh hang on right it's one in there we go everything's happening at once right get that open that's uh, I think we'd oh give over there we go turn that racket off uh, yeah, so so let me know what you think, as I say. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video today, please do click the like button. It's always appreciated. And if you haven't already, uh, please do uh, consider subscribing so that you never miss out on any future Train Sim World 4 content. We will be coming back to this, people. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of add-ons that are probably going to come to this, so keep an eye out. Other than that, as I say, thank you so, so much for watching. And hopefully, I shall see you all next time. Cheerio! Goodbye for now.